Well, hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Johnny and you're watching Hillbilly Modeling. Now, this is going to be part five of our U.S. Navy Swift Boat Mark I by Revell in 172nd scale. Now, this video might be a little bit longer than the rest of the series, but, uh, well, we got a lot of stuff to do, uh, which will include getting everything put together in our final reveal at the end. So you're going to want to see that. So we've got a lot to do. So let's jump down to the bench and get started. So we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last video. First of all, we have to clear our bench up and uh, make a little bit of room here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start doing some chipping effects. So we need to position the hull uh, where we can get to it and not knock things over too much. So I am using the deck color that we sprayed uh, all the decks on the boat. Um, this kind of keeps our color palette all the same. Uh, giving it a more uh, continuity. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> uh, so nothing terribly out of place here. And we can use this for scratches and uh, little marks on the hull. Now, since this is the airbrush mixture, it is quite thin. So we may have to go over some of these areas just a little bit more uh, in order to get those uh, abrasions. Uh, to stand out, uh, but that's okay because that kind of adds to the effect. And we want to go around and catch all these little sharp edges and stuff. It's just like uh, very similar to uh, doing the uh, weathering on armored vehicles, which I truly enjoy doing. Uh, there are areas on the boat where there are cleats, uh, so we'll do some areas around that. And then, of course, we have our steps here where there's going to be a lot of wear from uh, uh, men going up and down them. And along with the uh, handrails, uh, those will get a lot of use. So we'll just do a little chipping there. Uh, and I'm not using a sponge or anything. I'm just using the, the little pointy air, or uh, <laughs> almost said airbrush, um, a little pointed uh, paintbrush. So a small fine paintbrush works really well for this. I'm also using it to kind of catch these edges here, uh, not only on the doors, but the superstructure as well, to kind of bring those uh, sharp edges out a little bit from that real dark co uh, gray color that we have on the superstructure. So that'll help give more definition uh, for these kind of details. And that'll help these uh, edges and little details that's all around uh, the superstructure as well as the hull uh, kind of stand out a little bit from that darker color so that's kind of highlighting uh, those areas a little bit so next up we're going to use some testers uh, flat steel now this is an enamel paint so it is solvent based but it works really well for dry brushing and we're just going to use this uh, in some select areas uh, the open doorways at the bottom where they get uh, trampled on quite a bit. The runs uh, on our ladder here uh, just to show a little bit of bare metal. And then the really highly used areas maybe on our handrails here uh, where most of the paint would be probably worn off quite a bit. So this helps kind of bring that metal to, uh, to life a little bit for us. Now these boats were made almost entirely out of aluminum, so you can expect uh, some shiny areas here and there. So you can imagine where crew members are dragging their feet or stepping on these uh, door seals, uh, there just wouldn't be any paint left on those. So it makes sense to uh, kind of put that flat steel there. Uh, and I like using the flat steel because it's not uh, too awfully bright. Uh, which you can kind of run into with uh, a silver paint. So flat steel being a little bit duller um, kind of gives us a good look. And we're also catching these ribs around the bow as well. So not overdoing it, just a little bit here and there. Now we previously appreciated this, uh, well not appreciated, but uh, highlighted this with that deck color. So these uh, attachment points here are for rigging, uh, for, I don't know, if you're going to tow something or lash something that heavy that the boat may be needing to move, like a barge or something. Uh, I think, I forget what they're called. I think they're called dollards. I'm not sure. 
Uh, one of you guys with your sea legs will probably straighten me out on that. <laughs> uh, but we have three of them, so we need to go ahead and cement them into place. One in the bow, and then two each in the corners of the stern. And uh, we also have these cleats here uh, to either side of the deck, so we'll need to put those on as well. And these could be a good attachment point for any extra stuff that you may want to hang off the boat. Uh, oftentimes there were uh, uh, little cushiony type things or even tires that were lashed to these to protect the boat when uh, you come into the dock. So um, we do need to get these aligned correctly. And next up we can also put in our gun mount at this stage. So this is our rear deck gun. Uh, that would be that 50 caliber with the 81 millimeter mortar attached to it. So we can attach that mount. So next up we're going to use a little bit of CA glue here and we need to attach our propellers. Uh, I need these propellers to be <laughs> nice and straight and square with the hull and then they need to be square with one another as well so you don't have this weird optical look you know if you're looking across the the uh, propellers from the side so uh, just make sure that you get them uh, at 90 degrees to the uh, to the to the shaft there so that that looks pretty good and now finally we can start working on getting our railings in place so we will put these plastic railings in and uh, they will kinda because because of all the paint that we've put on this <laughs> uh, we do need to press them into place uh, and they tend to stand up pretty good there's only one that's a little loose but uh, um, we're just going to cement that into place and we need to make sure that uh, they're not all kind of out of place there, you know, and leaning out board or something. Alignment is critical because the eye is going to really go to it. And as you can see, this one on the uh, rear left corner here is, wants to fall over a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, we'll get that cemented into place and we'll let that dry. So we're going to use CA glue again here and start attaching things to our superstructure. Uh, we have these uh, life preservers. I almost forgot what they were called. Uh, they go to either side. And I'm using CA glue on these because I'm going to be handling this superstructure quite a bit. And once we get the windows in it, we can't really be touching you know, those areas where those windows are for fear of pushing them out. So we don't want to do that. So the CA glue will hold these uh, life preservers in place for us and we don't have to worry about knocking those off. Also on our uh, uh, munitions locker here that goes on the stern, uh, we have the option of displaying it with the, uh, the lid either open on it or closed. So since we've got all the, we're, we're going to have all the doors open on our superstructure, so I figured, well, we might as well just leave this open too. That way we can see our munitions uh, that's stored inside. So a little bit of CA glue there, and then we just need to get our lid perpendicular uh, to the top of our bin. Now when it comes to the storage locker, it just seems to me that there's, <laughs> there's something missing here. Uh, we're going to use that small wire that we're using also for the handrails uh, that we drilled out for in a previous video. Uh, we're just going to use a small piece of that, actually two pieces, uh, to uh, have the stays for the lid uh, on our uh, munition storage locker because it just, it just seems like that lid is not going to stay in its upright position uh, on the real thing without something to hold it up. So uh, I decided a couple of pieces of wire there can represent that for us. And it's just a little CA glue and we just glue them into the corners. And then uh, you want to make sure that they're both equal length so that they attach at the same point on the, on the lid. So we do have uh, a secondary helm uh, that goes on to the back of the superstructure here. And that's very useful uh, when you come into dock. So you can see all around the boat. You just want to make sure that that is straight when we put that on. So now our rails have had enough time to uh, really 
set up and we're not going to have to worry about bending them out of place or changing that angle to the deck. So we can go ahead and thread that real fine wire uh, right through those eyelets that we drilled previously. And this will be the top run of our handrails. Now with the first one in place, we're actually just going to CA glue it uh, right uh, to, the, to the end post of our rail. And while that CA glue is setting up, we'll go ahead and thread the opposite side and get that wire into place. And then we can go ahead and secure the end of it as well. Now we're going to alternate back to the first one we put in. And these were, this, this wire that we're putting in is representing actually a steel cable uh, that was on the actual craft. Uh, so in order to make it look more like it's a, uh, <laughs> a flexible uh, run, we're just going to put a little bit of bow in it there. So we start with that first section, and once we get the bow right where we like it, we will secure that uh, right up next to the post with a little bit of CA glue there. And then we'll give that time to dry, and we'll go on over to the opposite side, and we'll put the same, uh, hopefully the, <laughs> the same swag, uh, 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 swag, <laughs> sag, <laughs> into place and secure it. Uh, and we'll just keep doing this uh, left and right and move right on down uh, from one post to the other until we get them all in. Now when it comes to the very end, we're going to have to bend the wire over uh, for the corner there. So you're going to want to make sure that that's a sharp turn. And then I'm just taking my fingers here. We're going to put a little bit of a sag in it there. And uh, once we get our sag correct, we can just cut it to length. And then hopefully we don't cut it too short. And if you do, it's no big deal. You can just cut that piece off and just make a new one and, and CA glue it into place. So next up, since we have all this metal on there, uh, it's a good idea to prime it so that the paint will stick. Uh, so that's uh, a good idea anytime you're using photo etch as well. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want our acrylic paint to flake off of this metal. So we're going to give it a coat there with Mr. Primer. And then we can go back in and, and paint these uh, cables. Now for the top rail run here, I decided to use the deck color to give us a little bit of contrast uh, from the dark hull. Uh, so it all depends upon your point, you know, from the angle from which you're viewing it as to how much these are going to stand out. So I decided to go with the lighter color, um, and it should be fine. So with all of that done, uh, we can take our X, uh, yeah, X22 Tamiya uh, Gloss Clear. And we'll go ahead and spray everything and get everything ready for the next step, which will be the decals. So, of course, we're not going to go too into depth here with decals, except for the troublesome one. Uh, but you do need to separate your decals from the main sheet. Now, these are water slide decals, so they're not much trouble for application, but getting everything right... Uh, can tend to, <laughs> tends to be uh, uh, somewhat of an issue here coming up. But I have chosen uh, uh, for boat number nine because that matches the silver that we painted around the side windows on a superstructure. So I just want to stay in, into uh, uh, the correct, uh, historically correct, I guess, maybe, um, boat. So... We're going to start off with that star that goes uh, right on top of the bridge. And the way Ravel did, did this, it's, uh, it's a four-part decal. So you got to put, um, for the center section here, there's two pieces for it. So I'm doing my best to try to get it lined up. Uh, I need to get it anchored uh, to, the, to the roof section there. And then we need to press it in, uh, in that groove, uh, that creased area right there. So I'm using a toothpick or a cocktail stick, whichever you prefer, uh, to get that pushed in 
nice and, and solid there. Once that has dried a little bit, you need to cut off the excess uh, because the other decal that butts up against it uh, on, on either side uh, is not going to cover all of it. So I, I don't want this decal to set up, so I need to cut it and then peel off uh, that little sliver to get that out of the way. Now you never want uh, decals to overlap one another because you'll have a lump <laughs> in your in your decal. And then here from my cotton bud there, I have a little bit of fuzz that I need to pull off of it there. So yeah, it's kind of annoying sometimes, but uh, it's important that you clean all this stuff up. So we're gonna go ahead and work on the opposite side. And this is where we really run into some problems. Uh, either I didn't get the other side up close enough uh, to that, that light that is in the, uh, the center of that panel, or, I mean, I guess I, you know, once you pull these decals uh, off of the sheet, uh, you're almost stuck with it. So, do I try to modify that so it slides up more, or do I just kind of go with it? So I, I decided, well, I, it's probably a little bit crooked anyway, which seems to be my signature with decals. I have to get at least one crooked, and so it will probably be the most noticeable one. <laughs> so <laughs> in, in this case, it's definitely going to be this one. Um, so I just get it as close as I can, and uh, we'll go ahead and do the same procedure with uh, trimming it. Uh, we'll come back later and fix that horrible blue line that we got down in the middle of it. But, uh, uh, well, I should say blue-gray line. But same thing here, going to have to tuck it in and then, and then trim it off as well uh, so that the other ends of the decals uh, will actually fit well for it. Um, the, two, the two little wings, we'll call it. <laughs> So all the other decals went on just fine. Uh, we don't have any silvering issues. They laid down nicely. They were easy to adjust. They look really good. And these decals, the, the carrier on them, have a flat finish. Uh, so it's not an issue. Um, we even got our little nine there for the lid on our uh, ammo storage. And we've got these little uh, unit emblems here uh, on the doors. But we do have that horrible, horrible white or, or gap on, on our white star. So we're, we're going to go ahead and fix that. So we're going to use the, uh, the white uh, craft paint acrylic that we use for our pre-shading and also for the ceiling inside the, uh, uh, the crew area. And also, what else we use it on? Oh yeah, the lid for our ammo storage. That was white. And we're just going to touch up that seam right there so that it's not a real glaring issue. Uh, we're just going to do the white. Uh, you know, the whole design of this decal, and I'm glad I picked boat number nine because uh, the previous one, I think is boat 103, um, it has a huge star. Uh, to, to put up there and that would have been a total nightmare um, so the best thing would have been not to have these lights in the way the light in the horn and then uh, we could have uh, put the decal on and then attach those parts but that's what we're stuck with next up uh, we're going to work on our flag so this flag is supposed to be bent around uh, the pole that it's attached to, but we're not going to do that. We're going to use aluminum foil here and kind of laminate uh, our flag to either side of that. That way we can give it a better, more realistic uh, uh, flag wavy kind of kind of look there. <laughs> so we're going to need uh, two reference edges. So we're going to use uh, the spine right there of the flag and then the very top of the flag. Uh, so we just need to trim off uh, not only the carrier film, but the, of course the excess 
uh, paper there uh, and just go straight down the color print. That way we'll be able to trim both of these flags up the same way and we'll have a left and a right. So these are, uh, the, the flag is also the uh, water slide type decal. And we'll just slide this off onto our piece of aluminum foil or tin foil, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Cooking foil. <laughs> uh, and we'll just affix that. Uh, and, and we don't worry about getting it up to the edge. Okay, we're just going to let that dry and we'll come back to that. So for the opposite side of the flag, uh, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to trim the spine area first. And then we're going to trim the top of it, staying right you know, right, right on the edge. That's, that's where we like it, <laughs> right on the edge. Uh, so with that taken care of, we can go back to our flag that has set. And we're just going to trim off these two edges uh, of the aluminum foil right up against the flag. Now that's going to give us the... Uh, the two area the two lines uh, to align the opposite side of the flag so you gotta have uh, a point of reference when you're going from left to right and this will do it the top and, and that one edge down the blue union so and now all we gotta do is slide the opposite side off and just make sure you're putting it on the right <laughs> right area the right corner of your aluminum foil uh, that way they'll match up. Here we go. We'll zoom in just a little bit so that you can see better what uh, what I'm attempting to do here. So I found it a little bit easier here just to pull that decal off. And we're going to line up those corners. Or corner, I should say. So we only have two edges and one corner to worry about. And we'll just get that lined up. And then we'll set it aside and let it dry. And then all we got to do is trim off the excess. Go right up to the to the color line there and just trim it off. So that gives us a flag that uh, we can put all the creases we want in it. And we're gonna we're gonna really crease this one up because I kind of want it hanging hanging and dangling down. <laughs> uh, so what I'm doing here is I need two really flat, straight edges, and I have these two pieces of wood that works just great. We're just going to grab the very edge uh, of our flag there, and that's the edge that's going to be attached to the pole on the, on the actual vessel. And as you can see there, just making sure that it's not going to slip out. And the wood, uh, uh, raw wood, is a really good gripping surface. So um, we don't have to worry about damaging the, the, the decal, and then we can start uh, folding it. Now, at first I thought maybe folding it around a toothpick would, would work, but because of the aggressive angle that I really want on this flag, this is not really working out too well. So we're going get, to get a little bit more uh, Neanderthal with it here. <laughs> we're going to use our, our tweezers, and we're going to push it down in the direction that gravity would pull the flag, being very careful that we're not going to tear it. Uh, it is it is fairly tough, uh, but we do want to make sure that uh, we don't overdo it. it I mean, it, it'll take more abuse than you think, and then we're just able to uh, put in our creases and get that angle right. That's the important thing. Uh, we want this to look as natural as possible, and uh, you can pretty aggressively fold this flag with that aluminum foil in between it and it's going to hold its shape. And that's what we end up with. That's that's fairly realistic. I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. Just a slight flutter to it. And of course this is going to go on an angled staff anyway for the flag so that should look pretty good. So now we're ready to go ahead and seal in everything. So we want to make sure that our decals stay in place. And so this is uh, the X22, to me a clear, uh, gloss clear, uh, mixed up for my airbrush. And we'll spray all these areas down again. And that gets everything ready for our panel line accent color here. This is black. Uh, and we're going to use a really pointed brush. 
Now the long bristles on this brush holds a lot of product and once you get the get the brush loaded up with enough product it'll uh, actually run as you can see here around those areas. I'm only going to show a little bit of the deck area being done because that's where you can actually see it the best uh, when you're putting panel liner on those darker colors. It's not, especially in the camera, it's not, not really evident too much that that's what you've got going on. So we're going to go ahead and, and do all of, our, all of our little lines and creases and everything throughout the model. That, help, that helps bring out some depth. And also these, uh, uh, I imagine they're air intake screens um, or grates, uh, which crew can stand on. But we want that, uh, that pattern to kind of come out. And then we're going to give it a little bit of extra depth by using that enamel thinner, or not enamel thinner, but <laughs> our panel liner uh, to add that uh, dark color so it's more shaded look there. So as usual, anytime I use panel liner, there's always a little bit to clean up. And since the panel liner is an enamel-based product, we can use this uh, enamel thinner to clean it up. Using a cotton bud and a small brush, we can take care of any little areas uh, that have too much panel liner. Uh, and that's usually where, when you touch the brush down, you get those little spots uh, that you don't really want to show up on the model. So uh, using the uh, cotton bud with just a little bit of thinner on it, we can take and clean up the majority of the boat um, by just very lightly uh, brushing away and blending out any excess. And for those harder to reach places, uh, we can just use our little brush here and clean those spots up and that'll give it a, a neater appearance. And we do want to really look at the boat very critically to make sure that we get all those little areas fixed. Because next up, we're going to seal all that in with this Model Masters. Uh, this is a flat clear acrylic. Now, just use the uh, flat clear of your choice. Uh, this is what I'm using until it's completely gone. Once our flat clear coat has completely dried and I've, I've sprayed everything with that so we're ready to go. I do like to attach the uh, the stand to the boat itself um, so I decided that what we're going to do is we're just going to pick out uh, the center more or less of the <laughs> more or less uh, of the uh, uh, the whole red area of the boat to affix it um, it may not be the exact center of the boat, but uh, I think it looks better if it's more, um, how do I say this, under the majority of the mass of the boat. So I am just going to use a little piece of tape there to mark it uh, where the location is so that I can eyeball it and uh, carefully pick it up. We don't want to bend up our rails or anything. And yeah. With the mass of the superstructure mostly forward, I think that's probably the best location uh, for it. Now, you can put it anywhere you want it, but uh, <laughs> that's where I decided to put it. We no longer need all this masking that we've got uh, where the superstructure sets. And, of course, all those contact areas that we had masked up, we can go ahead and remove all that. We no longer need to protect that from paint because we're done with the painting. Well, mostly. <laughs> Next is to start some assembly here, and uh, that's, the, that's the fun part. So in goes the bridge floor area here, or should I say deck. And then, of course, we've got the radio operator's seat to go in. We have our countertop with our sink and radio. We'll put that in. And then we also have a uh, storage locker and, and bench seat. Uh, area which I'm sure it has storage underneath it too on the real thing and then we can put in our uh, ladder for our rear doorway and these parts don't have a lot of stress on them so I'm confident that that'll be fine with the um, to me extra thin now when it comes to the location of our fire extinguishers 
where they're located in the instructions are going to be areas where you if you're ever going to be able to see these through the windows or the open doors then uh, I think moving them is important especially over here uh, next to that bulkhead they want you to tuck it in between the side of the boat and the ladder you'll never see it so we'll just move it over to the other side now maybe that's not historically correct and that's okay with me uh, I just I think our fire extinguishers look nice and I think it would be okay if we could see them now when we painted these up we drilled a little hole in the bottom of them and super glued or uh, CA glued uh, a toothpick or cocktail stick in it so we need to get rid of that uh, that that'll be a problem <laughs> and we're just gonna sand that off nice and flat that way we've got uh, a nice flat area to attach these fire extinguishers uh, to the deck so with that done we just dip the end of our little fire extinguisher into a little bit of CA glue and position them where we want them and Hopefully they're nice and vertical. If we tuck them into the corners, uh, we should have a have a pretty good shot at a success there. So I think it looks pretty good. And then we'll do the second fire extinguisher as well. And with our fire extinguishers uh, firmly into place, that's that's everything that goes inside the boat. So now we don't have to worry about any of that, and we definitely don't have to worry about losing those parts now. <laughs> So back to our superstructure, we do have a life raft that needs to go on board. So we will take a little bit of CA glue there and press that into place. It has two little locating uh, pins. And now we're going to start working on these clear parts. So from all the cleaning, and or not cleaning, but the sanding and fitting that we did on these, uh, there are fingerprints on them. So... We're going to go ahead and uh, wipe those off. That way we can go ahead and install all these. And for that installation, I am using to me extra thin. You just got to be really careful. Just touch it to the corners and let it wick down around the window and you're fine. So if, I'm not going to show you putting all these in because the windshield is a little bit complicated because it's up over the instrument panel and everything. But as you can see here on the side windows, uh, if we did a good job fitting them uh, before, then we just touch the corners and our windows will be nice and secure. Just make sure you don't get that extra thin uh, any place that you don't want to see it. Next up, we do have a bunk that's suspended from the ceiling and attached to the left side of the interior of the uh, superstructure. So we have two poles. I think in real life these were actually chains, but uh, we're just going to use the kit provided parts there. And uh, we're going to glue those in first and get them aligned at 90 degrees and then we can just stick our bunk into place there. And not that you're going to see much of it, but it's in there. So next up, a little bit of CA glue here. And I'm going to go ahead and attach the doors. Uh, the CA glue is going to give us the best opportunity to keep these from popping off especially later on when we go to uh, uh, mate the uh, superstructure to the to the deck so we'll go ahead and put our three doors on and also this is probably the best time uh, I think to attach our flag uh, it's much easier than it would be once the superstructure is in place uh, on the deck so I can I can kind of handle this much easier and get the flag at the uh, correct flow slash angle <laughs> and without it falling off. So we'll have a better look at the flag later. So we do have a little bit of painting to do here. And that's all these signal lights and running lights uh, that need to be painted up. Um, red uh, for the left side and green for the right. And for that we're going to be using to me is X27 which is a clear red and then a clear green which is X25. So we're applying this over a uh, silver um, 
uh, base coat that we put on back in the painting video and this is just going to give us some color and that metallic color underneath will give us a little bit more uh, let's call it bling for <laughs> for our lights now these are really really small and hard to see uh, so whatever you can do to make them more visible and that is using that uh, that metallic color underneath this clear uh, will really help bring these out now according to our instructions these uh, anchors are just dropped onto the deck but I don't know about you but that doesn't look very realistic uh, these <laughs> these anchors actually need to be attached to something I mean uh, our sailors didn't just wouldn't throw the anchors overboard so let's uh, let's do something about that so what I've decided to use is this uh, thread here. Now this is thread for quilting. Uh, it is a polyester blend, which means it doesn't have a lot of those little frizzies, uh, which we don't want to deal with. So we have a, a, a little coiling jig that we've made up, and that's the tacky side out of a piece of uh, uh, low-tack uh, masking tape for painting. And I've got it taped down to this piece of cardboard here. This is going to be our jig for making some rope coils. So we're going to take a section of our thread and we'll just zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing, I hope. And uh, we're going to start off uh, just by placing it down. Now I have a circle drawn on there. Uh, that's the maximum that uh, the coil can be. We're going to go well inside that. And of course I do tape this down to my to my mat so it's not sliding around and running away from me here and we'll just start off by forming a circle and it's okay that our our coil is smaller than the circle that we've drawn uh, we just don't want to go outside that because of our deck area uh, we want it to fit uh, right where we're going to put these little coils so as you can see that low tack tape really works well uh, for holding our thread into place and we're just going to keep bending it around and sticking it to the tape. Now we want our coils to touch one another uh, as, as close as we can get them. Just butt them up against each other. Just kind of roll it over a little bit. And uh, keep coiling up uh, our, our anchor, anchor ropes. Now I'm sure the Navy had a specific length for these, but <laughs> I really don't care. <laughs> uh, I just need enough on there to make it look like that we have uh, plenty of rope. So when we throw our anchor overboard, uh, we're in good shape. So once we get it uh, enough rope coiled up that it looks fairly decent there, we want to make sure that the tail of the rope is uh, at, a, at a good angle wherever we're going to put this coil on the boat. So this is the, the angle that I've decided to use, and we're just going to cut off some excess here. And then we can move on to using some PVA glue, which is also called Elmer's glue, but uh, it's about a 50-50 mix here between the PVA glue and water. And I'm just going to mix this up with my little ratty brush here. And the water is going to help soak into the fibers, and that'll carry our PVA glue uh, into the coil. And of course, our PVA glue won't be so thick. And we're just going to paint this on. Paint it on right on top of the tape. We don't have anything to worry about there. And then we'll set it aside and let it dry while we go ahead and make our second um, rope coil. <laughs> Now I'm just going to get that little frayed edge off of the end of our thread so that it'll thread through our, uh, our anchor. And the next thing we need to do is kind of eyeball it to see how much uh, slack line we need for, for tying our anchor on. I think that probably will be more than enough. The, the length here doesn't really matter. So we're just going to take and uh, tie a couple of knots in it. I'm sure there was probably a ring or something that's supposed to go there, but for this uh, model at this scale, I think just tying a couple of knots will be fine. And then we'll secure the knot with a little bit of CA glue. And once we get that done, we can go ahead and trim that off to length there. 
just nip it off down to your to your little knot. Just don't cut the wrong side. <laughs> so with the PVA glue dry, we can just take our craft knife here and slide up underneath uh, the uh, the coiled rope, and we're going to separate that uh, very carefully from from our uh, masking tape. And there we go. So that's all going to stay into place for us as one unit, which makes it much easier to deal with. And we can just rub over any little frays there. So that looks pretty good. Let's put that on the boat. So we'll just set our coil right where we want it. Now it's not going to stay there. It's going to move around on us, but we kind of get uh, the idea of where that coil is going to go. We're going to use a little bit of CA glue here uh, and put that on that post. And I believe it's called a dollar, but I, I really need to look that up, don't I? But since I'm making the video, I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not looking it up. So uh, we're going to just wrap this around a couple of times. Um, and the CA glue will hold it into place. Of course, now things are going to move around on you, so... Uh, that CA glue will give us our, our actual length that we, that we want. Uh, and we can reposition our coil later. That's not, not a big idea, or a big deal, I should say. <laughs> um, so we get us a couple of loops on there, and then we'll go ahead and tie it off. And um, once we get it tied off, we'll just use a little bit of CA glue uh, to take care of that where it's tied off. And then we'll put that on the bottom of the coil as well and that will hold it to the deck so you don't want to move it around very much uh, you just want to set it into place there and press it down and that CA glue will take over from there and hold our coil in place for us so next up we're going to put a little CA glue here on our anchor which is already tied to the lead line we have coming off of our coil don't worry about the loop. We'll, we'll fix all that later. We just want to get that anchor down into place. And once it is, we can just tuck our line down uh, right up against the deck there. Now, once that's in place, we can go ahead and um, trim off any excess that we have there, um, which if you didn't do it before, now's a good time to do it. And... Uh, going to go back to our same PVA water solution here and we're just going to wet the line down and this is going to do a couple of things for us uh, it will firmly attach the line to the deck so it can't move and also since that thread is now wet uh, we can position it any way we want to on a deck because in its dry state it kind of wants to pop up and not lay uh, like the like the real thing would uh, so uh, using that PVA water mixture uh, we'll put it on the deck and there we go so we have both of them uh, done the exact same way more or less now this is the main reason why we left the uh, uh, the ammo uh, locker off until now uh, we need to have plenty of room to work around that. So we can go ahead and uh, affix our uh, locker into place here, our ammo storage. And I just use the Tamiya Extra th or the Tamiya Thick for that. And now it's time to go ahead and install our superstructure. It's about time, isn't it? So with all the fitting and work that we did to make sure that our superstructure would fit perfectly, it still doesn't. <laughs> so I ended up having to clamp this thing down uh, and then uh, wick in some to me extra thin to get it to adhere to the deck. And I just left it a three or four hours and let it dry. Um, I think the problem is, is that the... Um, uh, the actual recess in the deck is about 0.3 of a millimeter too short in length. So that's something to watch out for. Uh, now we can go ahead, though, and put our deck gun in place. That's that 50 cal with the uh, uh, 81 millimeter mortar. 
and then we can slide our uh, 50 cows, our twin 50s, uh, up into that fighting position. And we just need to, it's a bit of a friction fit, so we just got to press it into place. Now you can glue these down if you like, uh, but I've decided just to uh, leave it loose. It's plenty of tension, and uh, we can adjust the guns for display uh, any way we want. So let's take a quick look at everything that we've gotten accomplished in this build. Um, yeah, uh, it's a decent uh, it's a decent model. Um, I I really like the uh, the coiled ropes. <laughs> I like that. That came out really nice. And then of course using our little highlight gray colors there um, really helps bring out the edges, uh, especially on the superstructure. And then of course the uh, the areas where there would be chips and little dings here and there. Um, the railing, uh, I think uh, that was a good improvement uh, by adding the wire. That I think that looks so much better than uh, uh, what Revel suggested, which is wrapping thread around uh, the top of the uh, railing posts. So that worked out pretty good for us. The decals, not too bad. I mean, the, they're actually good decals. They sit down nicely, and, and they look really good. So to sum up the build, there are some issues uh, that I think probably need to be mentioned. Uh, the fit issues uh, with the superstructure to the deck area, that's, that's a problem. Um, you need to pay attention to that if you're going to build this kit. Uh, and the, the handrails that's up on top of the superstructure, they could have been better molded. We spent a lot of time straightening that out uh, and, and sanding those down. Uh, the windows, which has also been... Um, I, I really like the look of those windows, uh, but they could have been die cut. Uh, and then we just have to cut a couple of little tabs to get them off the clear sheet. That would have been better. Uh, and then the decal solution there for uh, uh, that big star, <laughs> that, that, that was a nightmare to, to kind of work through. But other than that, it's pretty good. But considering that it is a 2021 kit, uh, Ravel could have done better. Special thanks to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys like you wouldn't believe. I uh, really enjoyed the build, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, special thanks to any newcomers out there. I uh, hope maybe today I earned your subscription. And if so, and you enjoyed the video, uh, don't forget to give a like. That would be greatly appreciated. So until next time, guys, stay safe.